My brothers and sisters, I'm at the Epiphany House here in St. Matthew's. And when we gather for Epiphany, we hear the words from the prophet Isaiah, who says, Arise, shine out, Jerusalem, for your light has come. We know that the light of the world, of which Isaiah prophesied, is Jesus Christ, the universal saviour and king. Jesus comes to us as the way, the truth and the life. But more than that, Jesus gives us a way to share salvation with other people. And that is through his holy church, the Ark of Salvation. Here in St. Matthew's, we see how people's lives can be transformed by the gospel on a daily basis. As people come into this church or come into contact with members of the church. And when they hear of Jesus Christ and of the peace that he offers to each and every one of us. It's been extraordinary to minister here over the past 12 months. Uh, and this year I will celebrate my ninth anniversary as the parish priest of St. Matthew's Carver Street. I am richly blessed by all of the team here at St. Matthew's, by everyone who comes and worships and contributes to the life of this place. Since 1855, we have sought to minister to everyone who lives within this parish, those who pass through, those who party on our streets at night, and those who work here and shop here during the day. We have a divine commission to go out and to make disciples. Over the past 12 months, the parish has grown by a further 6.3%. And so we see more and more people coming and worshiping in this place. But more than that, we see people going deeper in their relationship with Jesus Christ. New members have been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. New members have been confirmed when the Bishop came to be with us earlier this year. We've seen people being reconciled after many years in the confessional where they can walk away knowing that their sins have been forgiven and they have been readmitted to the fullness of communion with God. We've seen a new life in the congregation as members of the congregation get married and have children and uh, bring them up in the faith. And it's been a great joy to see the numbers of uh, children and young people worshipping in this parish grow. New people have taken on fresh vocations and become more deeply involved in the life of the parish. For all of you who help in any way with the ministry in this place, I want to say a huge thank you because none of it would be possible without you. We are very much a team here at St. Matthew's. And as people come into this place, they can see the light of God in each and every one of you. There are a couple of things that I want to celebrate over the past year. One has been the renewed confidence of the people here in sharing their faith. I've noticed how people became more confident over Christmas in inviting people uh, to church, how our Alpha courses have really begun to flourish and how we've been able to start new initiatives in discipling people and growing people in the faith in this place. I've also seen and noticed how parents are teaching the faith to their children at home. Uh, I'm always struck by one little boy who comes to the altar each Sunday and before I can even finish saying the words of the blessing, he shouts out, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It gives joy to our heart, my brothers and sisters, because that child has the gift of eternal life and is proud to profess it. Over the past year, we've welcomed many visiting preachers. It was a particular delight to have a wonderful triduum with Bishop Roger Jupp, uh, who in retirement has a wonderful ministry uh, and we thank him for his service. For the Catholic Evangelism Lecture on St. Matthew's Day, we welcomed uh, Bishop Will uh, and he gave us a really uh, robust and life-filled vision for what it is uh, to be a Catholic in the Church of England today. I've seen how the church has grown in confidence in what we do out on the streets. This year for Corpus Christi and for the Assumption, on ordinary parish days, we were able as a parish to go out onto the streets and to take the presence of the Lord with us. The response, uh, like on St. Matthew's Day, is incredibly warm. People are not afraid to see the faith proclaimed on the streets. People are receptive and warm, and we just need to grow in confidence in doing that. Over recent months, there have been so many people who have come into the church or met me on the street uh, from younger generations who are eager and hungry for the gospel. No longer are there those barriers that we once perceived. 
but it seems to me like the generation of new atheists in the noughties, uh, Richard Dawkins and other people, are now bringing into the church so many people who are hungry for the gospel, so many people who have grown tired of the things of the world and want to find fresh hope and fresh life in Jesus Christ. This year, the Parish Nursing Project has also grown and flourished. And I would like to record here and commend Michaela for her work. Michaela received uh, just a few weeks ago now, the High Sheriff's Awards, both on, for her personally and also for the work of the Parish Nursing Project. We have a new parish nurse as well, Louise, who works alongside her and who's already made a sterling start with all of the volunteers. The Art House at St Matthew's has gone from strength to strength and has come much closer into the life and working of the parish. Our strategic director, Ben Clowns, has made a fantastic contribution uh, to the life of our parish and works very collaboratively uh, with all of our various and different projects. And I would like to commend him for his work and for the team at the Art House. We have exciting projects about to start, which are in collaboration between the church, the Art House, and the Parish Nursing Project. In the midst of all of this, we've also continued to be raising money for our Regenerate Project, uh, which we've now raised almost 440,000. We've still got a way to go if we want to reach that target of 770,000, but it is now within sight, my brothers and sisters. And so we'll carry on uh, with the final push towards that. But what I'm delighted about with Regenerate is that we've managed to do that without making it the main thing. Because we know that the most important thing that we do is to proclaim the love of Jesus Christ to those who live around us. I'd like to say a particular thank you to the church wardens and for all that they do within the life of the parish. They often manage the practical things alongside things of the faith. And I've seen how we've been able to integrate even fundraising into our mission. A particular favourite for me, I'm sure that you can imagine why, was the beer festival uh, this year, which was a fantastic uh, celebration uh, as usual. Uh, it was a great fundraiser, but it also brought a lot of people into the church who wouldn't have been here before. And it opened up conversations about faith and about who Jesus Christ is. I'd like to say thank you to our assisting clergy here at St Matthews, particularly to Father Watson, who continues to help us to maintain the daily mass, and to Father Alan Price, who joined us this year uh, on the staff and who has contributed uh, so much already uh, with his life and energy and encouragement. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of you who contribute towards the parish financially. We have been able to grow our finances here and as we go forward over the next 12 months, there will be uh, many challenges, but also opportunities. And one of the main things that we're looking at at the moment is to employ a part-time children and families worker in order to strengthen that ministry and to support our parents and to grow our children in the faith. I also want to thank all those who contribute to the daily life of the parish, to the hospitality that we offer to people, to our wonderful uh, hospitality team, the spread, uh, which has contributed to the spread of the clergy, I think. Um, but I'd, they do a wonderful work in welcoming people here into St. Matthew's. We've also got the sacristy team who day in, day out uh, provide for the needs of the church. Uh, and any visiting priest who comes here always says, what a wonder and a joy it is. Fiona, uh, our organist and the choir, uh, and for all that they contribute to the life of the church and how the choir has grown uh, and all of the recruitment work that Fiona's done, which has just been tremendous uh, over the past year. There are other people who often work behind the scenes. Uh, our servers who turn up very discreetly and just go about their work. Uh, Ian, our development worker, uh, who has done so much to put our teaching out there uh, online through the podcast and also in written form uh, and is able to communicate uh, with people in such a, a gracious uh, but also a challenging and dynamic way. Uh, so I'd like to thank him for all of his hard work. Uh, for our treasurer, to many thanks to Caroline and to Holly uh, for all of their work too in this place. There are so many things going on here at St Matthews that I know that I will have forgotten somebody or something. 
it takes a whole congregation to form a church of missional disciples. Over the next 12 months, we're going to have an emphasis on rule of life, thinking about our collective life as a church, but also what our individual lives look like. As a priest, I am here to support and equip you to be sent out as missioners and evangelists out in the world. And so from this Lent, we will be encouraging people to set up a rule of life, to think about what God might be calling them to do, how they can go deeper in their faith, how they can be drawn closer into the life of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. I'm very, very, very excited about Lent. We've got some fantastic preachers lined up uh, and there'll be some more news about them. But at Easter this year, we will be welcoming Bishop Lindsay Irwin, sometime administrator of the Shrine of Our Lady of Walsingham and sometime Bishop of Horsham. One of the most charismatic uh, and exciting preachers uh, in the church. Uh, he's been in Australia for a while, uh, but he will be coming back and this will be his first major preaching engagement. I believe that it's gonna be a real time of renewal at St. Matthew's. So make sure that you are praying and planning towards that wonderful weekend where we feel afresh the power of God and how he reconciles us to our Heavenly Father. I'm sitting here on Father Omini's chair that's used in the confessional. This chair has been in the confessional since Father Omini's day. And it's a place where I sit every day before mass and where the assistant clergy do as well and where we hear the confessions of those who come in to be reconciled. It is just a chair, but no doubt if it could talk, it would tell us of many moments of when people had been reconciled to the living God. Of course, the confessional is a place where no words can come out. The priest is under the seal of the confessional. But what I can say is that this ministry is vital and central to the life of this parish. Every day, increasing numbers of people are coming to be reconciled to God through this wonderful gift. It is a joy to see so many people are coming and making their confession. It shows the life and vitality of this community and it goes to the heart of the gospel. Jesus came into the world to reconcile us to our Heavenly Father. We are called to be reconciled, to know that we're forgiven and to be joyful in that, and then to share that with other people, to shine as lights in the world, to shine out like Jerusalem was called to shine out in the prophecy of Isaiah, because our light has come, which is Jesus Christ. So I wish you all a very happy epiphany, and as we go into this new year, I ask you to stir yourself for the proclamation of the gospel, for the further growth of ourselves and spirituality and the growth of this parish in service and in number. Let us pray. O oh Lord our God, you called your people to be your church. As they gather together in your name, may they love, honour and follow your Son to eternal life in the kingdom he promised. Let their worship be always sincere and help them to find your saving love in the church and its sacraments. Fill with the Spirit of Christ those whom you call to live in the midst of the world and its concerns. Help them by their work on earth to build up your eternal kingdom. May they be effective witnesses to the truth of the gospel and may your church, a living presence in the midst of the world, increase the gifts you have given to us that your people may continue to grow in holiness and your church continue to grow in number. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.